Hi guys, I'm Lisa. Welcome back to the channel. When I started my fight, I had a little trouble understanding the difference between retaliation, harassment, and hostile workplace. The line between them can be a little fuzzy. So today I want to talk about my very simplistic understanding of what the difference is and how it can affect our case. My AJ found in NASA's favor on my claims of retaliation, harassment, and hostile workplace. I made a decision to keep my case focused on my supervisor, and I let a lot of other NASA officials off the hook. I regret my decision not to drag every shady one of them right into the mix. If I had, I definitely would have won at least one of these claims. My AJ found that my boss's harassment and retaliation were because she had a sincere belief that I had attendance problems. It wasn't because of protected EEO activity, which would have been retaliation. It wasn't because of my disability, which would have been harassment. And it wasn't to the point of being severe and pervasive. So therefore, no hostile workplace. NASA didn't show any evidence that I actually had attendance problems. And I actually had a lot of evidence that showed it was pretext. But my AJ believed my boss's testimony and overlooked that evidence, even though he found my boss's testimony not credible on a bunch of other points. It was super confusing. His decision said that my boss had discriminated intentionally. He even bumped my damages because of it, but he still found no retaliation, no harassment, and no hostile workplace. And I accepted his decision because I had been fighting for six years and I was ready for it to be over. And also, he had given me a maximum award on the claim I won, which was more money than I ever expected to get. It's hard to tell the difference between retaliation, harassment, and hostile workplace just by looking at what your employer did. What distinguishes between them are your employer's motives for what they did and the effect that those actions had on you or other people in the workplace. If they did it because we participated in protected activity, and if those actions would have a chilling effect on others who were thinking about reporting discrimination, that's retaliation. If they did it because of your membership in a protected class, and it's offensive or intimidating enough that a reasonable person would find it hard to work under those conditions, that's harassment. And if the retaliation or harassment escalates to the point of being severe or pervasive, to the point where it makes it virtually impossible for you to do your work, that's a hostile workplace. I'm sure that's oversimplifying, so I'll put some links in the description in case you want to read up on all the differences. When I was going through it, an expert at another agency told me that EEO judges typically only find one of these three things. Because any given action can be retaliation, harassment, or a hostile workplace. The differences in the motives and the effects. He said in most cases, EEO just tries to figure out what the predominant motive and effect was. I think what bothers me most is that I don't believe my boss had just one reason for what she did to me. And I don't believe that any of what she did was motivated because she sincerely believed I had attendance problems. I think she wanted to make me miserable at work so that I'd retire early and she could replace me with someone who didn't have any medical needs. That's harassment on the basis of disability. I also think she wanted to punish me for filing a claim against her because I embarrassed her in front of upper management. That's retaliation. I also think she was a little bit of a power-tripping artist who enjoyed hurting me because I was broken and therefore no use to her. And that's hostile workplace. I see all three very clearly, and I think that if I had pushed my case to federal district court, my attorney could have won on at least two of those claims. Juries don't seem to have the same hang-ups that EEOC has about one predominant cause. Like the rest of us, they seem to realize that motives can overlap. If you're going to file one of these claims, I recommend filing all three. Employers who are defending discrimination will do just about anything to win. If you file a harassment claim, but no claim for retaliation, and what they did ends up being closer to the legal definition of retaliation, you could lose your case, even though your employer violated the law. If you don't claim all three, you end up creating gaps that they can exploit to win. Don't give them that. Those other claims can still give you leverage in settlement and mediation. And worst case, if you end up in federal court, a jury might take your side. So when it comes to retaliation, harassment, and hostile workplace, I say when in doubt, file the claim and use the EEOC process to sort out what's what. I'll see you guys again next week. Till then, take care and hang in. Bye, smart.